Complex numbers. Convert trigonometric complex numbers to standard form. What are they? Complex numbers are a mixture of a real number and an imaginary number. Why? Electrical engineers use them. Interesting fact. Melanism is the name of the dark colored pigmentation mutation in a jaguar or leopard that causes the fur to be blackish. It occurs in about 6% of the population. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Before we take a closer look at example 1, let's look at the formulas that are helpful in converting a complex number from trigonometric form to standard form. Standard form is z is equal to a plus bi, where a is equal to r cosine of theta plus b is equal to r sine of theta. In trig form, we have z is equal to r times the quantity of cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, or z is equal to r times cis theta where r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and tangent theta is equal to b over a, and finally, r is the modulus of z, and theta, or the argument, is the angle. Now, let's put those formulas into action by starting example 1. Let's read the steps. Step 1, draw. Step 2, use the formulas. Step 3, follow order of operations. Now, let's read the question. Express the trigonometric form 5 times the quantity of cosine of pi plus i sine of pi in standard form. Now we have all the formulas that we might need on the top right. Now let's convert this complex number into a metric form to standard form. First, we have to distribute that 5 to both terms, and the result is 5 times cosine of pi plus 5i five times sine of pi. What do we think is the next step? That's right, we need to find a and b, so we can write our complex number in standard form. So a is equal to 5 times cosine of pi, and b is equal to 5 times sine of pi. So r is equal to 5, and theta is equal to pi. First, let's find phi cosine of pi. And cosine of pi is negative 1, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, so a is negative 5. Next, let's find 5 sine of pi, and sine of pi is 0, and 5 times 0 is 0, so b is 0. Since we want the standard form, let's write down z is equal to a plus bi. Now we can substitute negative 5 for a and 0 for b, so we have z is equal to negative 5 plus 0i, and 0i is 0, so we have z is equal to negative 5. Now let's graph it. Where do you think the point will be? Let's find out. Let's go 5 to the left for a. And there we have it, since b is 0. That is example 1. Let's move on to example 2. Now, let's read the question. Express the trigonometric form square root of 10 times cis of tangent inverse of 3 in standard form. Once again, we have all the formulas that we might need on the top right. Now, let's convert this complex number in trigonometric form to standard form. First, we have to rewrite that cis with cosine and sine. We've also multiplied the square root of 10 to cosine and sine. So we have the square root of 10 times cosine of tangent inverse of 3, plus square root of 10i sine of tangent inverse of 3. What do we think is the next step? That's right, we need to find a and b. So we can write our complex number in standard form. So a is equal to the square root of 10 times cosine of tangent inverse of 3. And b is equal to the square root of 10 times sine of tangent inverse of 3. So r is equal to the square root of 10. And theta is equal to tangent inverse of 3. Since 3 is not on the unit circle, we cannot write an exact value for tangent inverse of 3. Let's work backwards and write theta instead of tangent inverse of 3. Now, we have something we have seen before. Do we know what cosine of theta and sine of theta are? Not yet, but we can use tangent inverse of 3, the graph, and SOHCAHTOA to find cosine of theta and sine of theta. For this next part, we can use cosine or sine. We are going to use sine. What do we think sine of theta is equal to? That's right, sine of tangent inverse of 3. Since we have sine of something is equal to sine of something, 
we can set those something's equal to each other, or in this case, theta and tangent inverse of 3. Let's continue to work backwards and take tangent on both sides. So we get tangent of theta is equal to 3, or 3 over 1. Why do we think we rewrote 3 as 3 over 1? That's right, so we can draw it on the graph. Using Sokotoa, we know tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now we can graph. We go 1 to the right and 3 up. And there's our point, and our theta, and our modulus, which is the square root of 10. Could we have switched the 1 and the 3? No. Theta starts from the x-axis and goes to the modulus. So 3 needs to be the opposite side length, and 1 needs to be the adjacent side length. Let's check to see if the modulus is actually the square root of 10. How do we find the modulus? That's right, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, so r is definitely the square root of 10. Now we define cosine of theta and sine of theta. Do we know the exact value of theta? No, but we can find cosine of theta and sine of theta using the right triangle and Sokotoa. So cosine of theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 10. Let's substitute 1 over the square root of 10 for cosine of theta. So we have a is equal to the square root of 10 times 1 over the square root of 10, which is 1. So a is equal to 1. Next, we need to find sine of theta. So sine of theta is equal to 3 over the square root of 10. Let's substitute 3 over the square root of 10 for sine of theta so we can find b. So we have b is equal to the square root of 10 times 3 over the square root of 10, which is 3. So b is equal to 3. Since we want standard form, let's write down z is equal to a plus bi. Now we can substitute 1 for a and 3 for b. So we have z is equal to 1 plus 3i. That is example 2. Now it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time, and I will show you the result in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Awesome. If not, there's always tomorrow.